Welcome to Grace Fellowship Online. My name is Pastor TJ. I'm the youth pastor here at Grace Fellowship. If this is your first time with us. Thank you so much for deciding to join us today. We would love for you to take just a moment and type in the word new, N-E-W, into the chat. One of our hosts would love to pop in and say hello. If you're a regular attender, there'll be an opportunity later in service for you to fill out our digital connect card. Right now, we're going to take a few moments and we're going to worship together as a church family. I want to encourage you to stand up, participate, and let's worship.
good Lord. We're here to worship you today.
never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see that you're working.
guys so much for deciding to worship with us. We're going to take just a moment and continue to honor God in our giving and in our generosity. Last summer, we had four interns and an intern leader who reached out and loved in our cities and loved in our cities over 200 times over the course of the summer. And to top it off, we actually grew during the course of the summer. We saw more people than ever before come experience grace. That is what God has called us to do as a church, and that's what God has called us to do as an, indiv as an individual within the church. And we're going to do that again this summer. It's going to look differently this summer because of COVID and because of everything happening around us. But we need your help and your generosity and your giving all play a part in helping people experience grace. And we're going to continue to see growth through the summer and seeing more people added to the kingdom than ever before. Would you guys pray with me that our giving and our generosity would continue to honor God and see people come to know him? Father, thank you so much for what you did last summer. Thank you so much for what you're doing even right now amidst the crisis. Lord, I pray that you would continue to work in our hearts. God, work in the people uh, around us, our neighbors, the people that we, that we see in the grocery store, the, 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 the Starbucks workers, the caribou workers. Lord, I pray that we would know that you are working within us and God, that our giving directly impacts somebody's eternity. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for that reminder. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. Check out our need to know. Hi, everybody. It's Jen McIntosh, your guest services lead, and I'm bringing you the need to know. First, congratulations to all of our grads. Woohoo! We are so proud of you, and we want to celebrate you on Sunday, May 24th. So we need you all to submit a photo of yourself, what you just accomplished, where did you graduate from, and what's next in store for you. The deadline for all this information is May 17th. So make sure you go to our website, go to findgrace.com slash grads, and let us know this info so we can celebrate you. Number two, we miss you guys so, 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 so much. And we cannot wait until we can gather again together. As you know, things have been changing from week to week and our staff has been working so hard to stay on top of all of the updates. We've also been working hard on a plan to safely and clearly get us back together when we regather. We want you to know that all of those updates are available for you to check out on our website at findgrace.com slash COVID updates. Number three, we just wanted to say a huge thank you. So thank you. You guys have given just over $22,000 to help those impacted by COVID-19. Our goal is $25,000 and we are so, so, so close. We have a match for the first $25,000, making the grand total to $50,000, and we would love your help in reaching this goal. You can click on the Give button and select COVID. Thank you so much for your generous hearts to help us love and lead our cities. We want everyone to experience grace. That's it for me, guys. Praying that you're staying safe and healthy. Until next week. Welcome to another week of Parenting Like a Boss. You know, when I was growing up, one of the biggest lies I thought my parents always told me was when I would get in trouble and they would say, we're going to have to discipline you and this is going to hurt us more than it's going to hurt you. Well, I never believed that as a kid. But as a parent, I found that statement to be very true. I believe that disciplining our children is one of the most difficult things we're ever going to do when we parent like a boss. And the truth is, it really is hard work to discipline because it's something we don't really want to do. But God tells us that discipline is actually for our benefit. 
Discipline is correction driven by love. My parents used to say this all the time. If I didn't care, I wouldn't say anything. If I didn't care, I wouldn't do anything. God models this for us. In Hebrews 12, verses 5 through 6, it says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines those he loves. God cares too much about us to let us run around like a bunch of yahoos doing whatever we want, but instead, he calls us to something that is much greater, and oftentimes that requires discipline. When we think of discipline, we usually equate that to being in trouble or doing something wrong. Like I can remember as I stand in my house right now, what it was like as a kid. In my world growing up as a kid in Pineville, Louisiana, the most important thing I thought a parent could do was light a fire and burn the burn pile. In our backyard on Nine Oaks Lane, we had a ton of pine trees. And so we would rake up all the needles and we'd make this big mountain. And my dad would always strike a match and he would burn it and we'd watch to make sure that it stayed in control. But my dad gave me the responsibility of making the pile and cleaning the yard and I did that. But I wanted to be really grown up in that moment and I wanted to light the fire. But my parents weren't there, they weren't watching me and I thought, Eh, I'll just do it anyway. So I went in the house and I got a book of matches and I went outside and I struck a match and whew, the wind blew it out. And then I blocked it with my body, but the wind blew it out. Then I got down at the bottom of the base of the pile and I lit it, but the wind blew it out. And I thought, what am I gonna do? I had seen chariots of fire on television and I thought they were running in the Olympics with this torch. It never went out, that's what I'm gonna do. And so I went inside the house to make my very own torch, but I didn't have a torch. But what I did have was a roll of paper towels. I took all of that off and I got that tube. And then I jammed all that paper in the top of it, thinking this is perfect. And I can light it in the house where there's no wind and then I'll run out there, dun, 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 and it's gonna be awesome. But the problem was I wasn't tall enough to like do it safely in the sink. So I thought, I'll just go to the middle of the house where the bathroom is because the sink's lower. And so I went into the bathroom, I lit the match, it caught on fire. It was going great until I got halfway down the hall and it got really hot, like balls of fire, like shooting down the tube. And as a kid, I freaked out and I let go and it fell on the ground and it started to burn the carpet and I started to stamp it out. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? And I freaked out because not only had I disobeyed my parents, but now there's evidence of a burn spot in the carpet and it's in the middle of the carpet. And I can't do anything about it. And I was overwhelmed. And my parents, their response was they didn't get angry even though I know they probably were, my parents decided that they would discipline me. You know, it reminds me of this passage of scripture. In Proverbs 19, 18, it says, Discipline your son, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party in their death. My parents made me do a whole bunch of chores to make up for the cost of replacing and fixing the carpet in the middle of the house. But you know, I learned an important lesson don't play with fire because you'll get burned or you could burn the house down. And because I learned that lesson, I've always been really careful moving forward. Here's what I've learned as a parent. What I've learned is that discipline isn't something we do to our kids, but something we do for our kids. You know, Zig Ziglar, a famous motivational speaker said this. He said, a child who has not been disciplined with love in his little world will be disciplined without love by the great big world. And I think that that's really true. And so we want to discipline early and often so that our kids can get on the right path. But you know, when it comes to discipline, I think that one of the greatest challenges is that parents often find themselves in the undisciplined parenting styles. And I think that there's three that we need to take a look at. The first one is the lifeguard parent who often rescues their kid from their consequences. Their kid never faces the consequences, and so they never learn. And then whenever they get under authority in the real world, that's when they really pay the price. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, it says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And so we need to learn consequences at an early stage and not rescue our kids, but help them learn how to grow through the mistakes and grow in their responsibility. A second one I love is like the Etch-a-Sketch parent. 
And this is a person who's often inconsistent. They say one thing, they do another, they talk big, but they don't follow through. The Bible says this in Proverbs 29, verse 15 and 17, the rod of correction imparts wisdom, but a child left to himself disgraces his mother. Discipline your son and he will give you peace and he will bring delight to your soul. See, discipline helps us be consistent and discipline helps us become who God wants us to be. But make no mistake about it, inconsistent parents produce insecure children. And when they're insecure, they're uncertain about life and they struggle when what God really wants is for us to thrive. A third example is the split decision parent. This is somebody who is often ununified with the other parent. They seem to be at odds, they're not unified. Go ask your mother, go ask your father. And then they're not even on the same page in the same book at the same time. The good news is the Bible wants us to be in the same book, on the same page, at the same time. See, we can disagree in private, but we need to be unified in front of the kids. Amos 3.3 asks this powerful question I think we've gotta ask ourselves: Do two walk together unless they've agreed to do so? See, if we're not walking together as one, our kids are going to conquer and divide, and they know how to get between parents. It's important that we disagree in private, but publicly in front of the kids, we're unified because that helps build security, consistency, and direction for kids to follow. If we're ever going to really shift gears and parent like a boss, then one of the most powerful things we can do is focus on parental expectations. See, I believe that we need to work towards first time and cheerful obedience. When we ask kids to do something, we need to expect them to do it. And if they don't, it's time to do something else. In fact, God even backs us up on this, parents. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. In fact, he doesn't just stop there. In Philippians 2, 14, it says, Do everything without complaining or arguing. We need to make sure that we discipline our child in a proper way. And I think that there's three really good rules of thumb that we can apply. The first one is never discipline in anger. In fact, the Bible's so clear in Ephesians 4.26, it says, in your anger, do not sin. You know, whenever your kid does something wrong, it's so easy to just snap and say, look at me, look at me. But see, we shouldn't say that. My wife does this better than anyone I know. When she gets upset, she calms down for a second. And instead of saying that, she says, let me look at your beautiful eyes for a minute. And so she's reframing the discipline, not to be harsh, but to be a moment where she can build them up and equip them. She wants to speak the truth, but she speaks it in love. A second rule of thumb is let the punishment fit the crime. Now, a perfect example of this in our world has to do with our son, Dre. Whenever he was in high school, we had an agreement around grades and keeping your grades up and getting to do fun things with your friends. But there was a time where his grades went eh, 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 down. And so we called a little board meeting with the family. We sat down with him. We said, hey, we noticed that your grades are starting to drop. We want to know what happened. He said, it's not a big deal. It's just a small thing. I just didn't turn in all my homework. And the homework only counts for a small percentage. It's not that big a deal. Now, part of the agreement was that if his grade dropped below that certain point, he loses Xbox. And if you know a teenager loses an Xbox, they lose their mind. And so Michelle and I, we looked at him, we prayed. And I said, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. Dre, we're not going to take away your Xbox. And I could just see this moment where he had this relief just wash over him. I said, you can have your Xbox. I just need your power cord. And he said, what? And I said, hey, it's just a small thing. It's not that big a deal. Well, the good news is, is that Dre learned his lesson. And Dre bounced right back. His grades went right up. And we've never had to take away his Xbox. And we've never had to take away a power cord. So there's a third thing we need to learn. And it's this. We need to discipline promptly with instruction and reconciliation. Well, what does that mean? Well, in Ephesians chapter 6, Verse four, it says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. And when I think about that, I think about a time when one of our younger boys was having a problem with lying. 
He'd been lying to Michelle multiple times throughout the day. She caught him in it. She called him out on it, but he acted like it was no big deal. And the more she'd press in on it, the more he said, I'm not hurting anybody. And so as I pulled into the garage and the garage door opened, he knew that I was coming home and he liked to hang out with me when I got home from work. But Michelle looked at him and said, you know what? Because lies don't matter. You need to go downstairs and you need to tell dad that you don't love him. And all of a sudden his eyes got really big and he started to freak out and he started to hide in the corner and he started to kind of cry and whimper. And Michelle says, why are you hiding? Why are you crying? And he said, I don't want to go tell dad that. And she said, why not? And she said, because it's a lie. It's a lie. If I tell him that, it'll make him really sad. And that's when Michelle looked at him and said, so lies do hurt people. You know what I believe is the greatest lie that we believe today? It's that we can do life without God. That we think we've got it all figured out and that we're in control. The truth is we're God's children and God doesn't just parent, he parents like a boss. He made us, he created us. He knows exactly what we need and he knows exactly where we need to be. Today, I think the greatest struggle we have is that we're doing life by ourselves. We're either not trusting God and we're not spending time with God or God's people and it's costing us more than we know. Today, I wanna to invite you as a parent that may be struggling with discipline to realize that God wants you to be a part of his family, that God wants to guide you and lead you. He's speaking out to you right now that no matter what you've done, no matter how far you've gone, that he loves you and he loves you so much, he meets you right where you are, but he loves you so much that he won't leave you there. God's not mad at you, God's mad about you, and he wants a relationship with you. Today, I wanna to pray for parents, and I wanna pray that if you're struggling and you don't know God, that today would be the day that that would change. Let's pray. God, I just thank you that parenting is really, really tough, but we don't have to do it by ourselves. God, you give us guidelines and direction and you show us that discipline isn't about punishment, it's about love. God, give us the wisdom and the insight and the, the tools that we need to lead our children in a way that they would grow up and follow you. God, help us to have strength to endure those difficult times and know that we're not alone. But God, right now, if there's anyone here that's listening to this, maybe they're just sitting on the couch and they're wondering, I've just been doing this by myself. God, I pray that you would help them to know that you are madly in love with them, that you're pursuing them, and that they're just one step away from finding peace in you. God, you promised that in our greatest time of need, we'll find grace. God, I pray that right now, no matter where somebody is, no matter what their struggle is, that they would trust you. And in trusting you, they would find and experience your love and grace. Amen. If you just made that decision today, I think that that is huge. I'm so excited because we want you to experience grace and we want to do life with you. I want you to take just a moment and hit the button to signify that you're raising a hand or maybe you click the link that, that says, I made a commitment to follow Jesus. This is the most important decision that we can make. It begins our journey together and you're not alone. We wanna send information to help you grow in your decision and help you get closer to God and experience that freedom and peace you desire. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you next week. God bless. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. If you just made the incredible de decision of giving your life to Jesus, let us know by clicking, I commit my life to Jesus button. We just want to get in touch with you. We want to celebrate with you. We want to connect with you. And we just want to give you some free resources for your new faith. For the rest of us, we just want, we would love for you to fill out our digital connect card. We want to make sure we have the right address, make sure that we have the right phone number, and figure out how we can best serve you. If this message or this service was helpful, we would love for you to share it with your friends, your coworkers, or your family. We will see you guys next week for the next part of Parenting Like a Boss. We love you guys. We miss you guys. We'll see you next week.